<laughs> Welcome to another edition of the Have A Go Garden. We've had a magnificent heat wave all weekend, and many of the plants in the garden are flourishing. However, with the heat comes the need for extra watering, and of course the development of those tiny wee beasties that tend to eat your vegetables. Now in our garden, we don't believe in using pesticides to protect our plants, so we have to find other means. And often the first line of defence comes from nature, in the form of a flower. There are many advantages to growing flowers alongside your vegetables. Not only do they add a little bit of beauty to your patch, they also attract insects with their fragrance, colour and natural chemicals. And if this isn't enough for you, I always make sure that every flower I sow in my veggie patch is edible. I'm starting with a gardener's favourite, the sunflower. Now I've grown these from seed, but don't worry if you haven't, you could just pop the seeds in the ground now from about April onwards, or just buy the plants from, from a garden centre. Now with their enormous, beautiful, yellow, sun-like heads, they, they can't fail to attract insects. The other thing they'll do is put a great big smile on your face. <clears throat> and when they've died away, towards the end of the summer, you can dry out the heads and eat the seeds. Or save the seeds for next year and save yourself a bit of money. Plant the sunflowers in rows about 20 centimetres apart. It's always a good idea to grow taller plants at the end of your patch so they don't overshade the lower lying plants. Finally, don't forget to water all your newly planted flowers once they're in the ground to avoid a cat astrophy. Now comes the really exciting part edible flowers. I've grown these nasturtium seedlings and I'm planning to put them in rows in between my vegetables all around my patch. Push out your nasturtium seedlings with a pencil and then carefully pull them out from the roots. Make a small hole in the soil and plonk them in, covering the roots over with excess soil which also provides some support for the stem. Nasturtiums come in lots of different colours and are ready available as plugs online or at a garden centre. Of course I'd recommend you grow your own and watching these beautiful seedlings develop is so satisfying. My top, top recommendation is borage. This beautiful herb produces blue, white and even pink flowers that can be eaten. But that's not all. The leaves are also edible. They taste a little bit like cucumber and they're perfect for a gin and tonic. Here's some other things that you could try. The leaves of Chinese chives are an excellent alternative to spring onions. Towards the end of the season, they produce pom-pom-like flowers which bees love. Plus, their scent masks the smell of other veggies such as carrots and radishes, therefore protecting them from being eaten by bad beasties like carrot fly, black fly and other nasties. Companion planting like this either works by masking, distracting or in the case of the poached eggplant, by encouraging good insects like ladybirds who prey on aphids. Not terribly edible, but a real insect attractor, as is the aniseed tasting fennel. Your sunflowers are going to gr grow very tall, so don't forget to tie them up to some very long canes. And there you have it, lots and lots of different flowers that you can eat in your garden. Why don't you have a go?